Hello friends, this is Durga again from ITVersity. Um, so far we have covered data ingest and uh, now we will start um, exploring the next module transform stage store. Again this has five sub uh, learning objectives uh, which is uh, predominantly uh, transforming and staging the data using Spark. And if you see the main heading of the uh, module it says that you should be able to uh, convert set of values in HDFS into new data values which means the transformation of data. It could be a data format, it could be the changing the file formats also. So convert a set of data values in a given format stored in HDFS into new data values and there are a new data format which is file formats and write them into HDFS. So you have to be familiar uh, about and the transformations that can be done uh, using uh, um, um, using HDFS and uh, for the transformation they are primarily emphasizing on Spark applications and you should be able to write in both Scala and Python. It's not all, it's AND. So you should be familiar with both Scala and Python at least um, uh, achieving these five tasks. The first one is load data from HDFS and storing results back to HDFS. Second one is joining da disparate data sets through, uh, together using Spark. Third one is calculate aggregate statistics like average sum etc using Spark. And fourth one is filter data into a smaller data set using Spark. And fifth one is write a query that produces ranking and sorting data using Spark. So it's primarily um, focusing on uh, transforming the structured data which you typically do um, in uh, traditional data warehouse systems and the difference is you should be able to do it with spark especially using programming languages like scala and python and uh, uh, this video i will also try to cover uh, spark introduction in detail so i have not uh, checked in to this uh, this script into github account yet but I will do that um, very quickly. So there are uh, all these things you should be familiar with when it comes to um, uh, the Spark introduction. So there are multiple tools which you need to be familiar with because uh, and the curriculum says that you should be able to write applications in both Scala and Python. So if you want to write applications in Scala, you can use You can go to Cloudera Quick Start VM. It comes with uh, uh, Spark installed automatically, um, and uh, you can validate that by running Spark Shell, which is uh, uh, which launches the Scala-based command line interface. So you can write Scala scripts or Scala commands by launching Spark Shell. Okay, so it will just take a moment to launch. So now it is launched. Uh, when I type Spark Shell, it launch with Scala and you can run uh, Scala scripts or Scala commands directly here. For example, if you want to assign a value, either you can use val or var, and you can say the variable name and the data type like this, and you can assign a value to it. And now I is an integer type of variable which is assigned with zero. Similarly, I can also define a string variable with name and then the data type and then I can say new string hello world and hit enter now the string have hello world and if you want to do the print you can say print ln str and it will print hello world so this is uh, on the Scala uh, spark running on the Scala con context and uh, on top of um, uh, these things you you also should be familiar that once you launch uh, Scala con uh, Sc uh, Spark in Scala context or even in uh, PySpark, uh, Python context by using PySpark command, you can use um, uh, SQL context and Hive context, and actually you can uh, do the processing of data using SQL. If you are familiar with SQL, um, I will uh, highly recommend you to focus on these two contexts: SQL context and, and Hive context to process the data on top of uh, uh, to process the data using SQL type of syntax 
uh, which is in uh, uh, HDFS using Spark. And uh, I will cover all those things in detail as we go forward. And also in the latest version, there is a Spark SQL. You can just type Spark minus SQL and uh, like Hive command line interface, it will launch uh, uh, Spark uh, context in SQL interface. And if, uh, if you have integrated Hive properly with the Spark, you can run all Hive queries using Spark. The difference is Hive uses MapReduce to execute those SQL queries, whereas Spark uses its own way of um, uh, processing the data. It will not use MapReduce to process the data using Spark SQL. Instead, it uses its own uh, format. But it understands the Hive meta store and it uses the Hive meta store while compiling uh, uh, the query into the Spark code. Um, and uh, but if you, if if they provide Spark SQL as part of the certification, you can launch it and you can type uh, you can start running the uh, SQL queries directly using Spark SQL. But I doubt they will provide that uh, because uh, the latest version of Spark is 1.5.2, and the version which uh, the version in the Cloudera VM which I am using is 1.3.0. So they are way behind the current uh, spark versions so they might not provide spark sql but if you are lucky enough and if if you get that you can use that and write the hive queries directly anyway even if if they do not provide spark sql still you can use sql context and hive context to process the data using sql itself and then minimize the usage of uh, scala or python uh, uh, while implementing the uh, business logic they have provided uh, for the requirements they have provided as part of the certification so you should be familiar with all these things spark shell pyspark spark context sql context and hive context uh, we will see all those things uh, as we go forward but i will run one hive query uh, uh, to demonstrate it and also using spark you can connect to a relational database by using jdbc driver uh, using commands like this again depending upon the version syntaxes might be different uh, with uh, 1.3.0 this syntax will work on Cloudera VM uh, but JDBC might not be that important uh, sometimes if you want to validate whether your results are correct or not this, this can be handy that's why I am covering this also anyway we will see that uh, as part of uh, uh, next video. Um, uh, now let's see the SQL context of Hive, sorry, of Spark. So we launched the Spark shell already, okay. And uh, uh, to uh, sorry, I will try to use Hive context more than SQL context because SQL context uh, you have to create a table in more complicated manner. If you if Hive context works then you don't need to create the tables if it if you have the table already in hdfs using hive you can access that query already for that you need to follow these steps you have to exit from spark shell and then uh, under etc hive conf there is a file called hivesite.xml so you have to either copy or create a soft link for this file by using ln ln minus s command etc Hive conf this is the location and hivesite.xml is the file uh, and you have to create the soft link in spark conf directory etc spark conf hivesite.xml so you will not have permission so you have to use sudo and hit enter now the soft link is created you can validate the soft link by running etc spark conf and you can see um, and that the soft link is valid if the soft link is not valid and if you are using Cloudera VM this will be blinking in red as this is not in red the soft link is fine you can also run this command to make sure that the soft link is working so uh, even though we say spark comes at the path still it is reading the file uh, which is etc hive conf hivesite.xml this is called as soft links in linux anyway so once you have that you can run spark shell like this 
and it will launch the Spark shell in Scala context. So once it is launched, you can see that it has created SQL context with Hive support. But unless you create the soft link uh, to HiveSite.xml, when you try to run the queries, it will fail. Now, if you go to Hive, sorry, clear Hive. And uh, show tables. There are a bunch of tables in the default database, which is departments. Uh, I will pick one of the table, which is departments in this case. So now I can actually say SQL context dot SQL, and then I can run the query. Select star from departments. So it will generate something called RDD in, in uh, Spark. I will cover what is RDD uh, as part of the subsequent videos. Uh, RDD is nothing but a collection of uh, uh, the records in this case whatever uh, data we have in departments it will be uh, created as an RDD typically RDD stands for re 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 resilient resilient distributed data sets um, and if it is uh, too big and then uh, yeah and if you have multi-node cluster uh, data from a given file will be distributed on multiple nodes into the memory as a collection uh, of mutually exclusive subsets of that data. In this case, we just have uh, some eight records. So it will be fit into uh, one RDD, which is nothing but collection of uh, objects uh, in memory or collection of records in memory. Uh, so to process that RDD in Scala, you can use this command called collect. It will collect all the records in the RDD. And then uh, it, it means it will, become, it will make a collection of it and then you can type for each so for each item in the uh, in the collection you can do whatever you want in this case i just want to print so i can say print ln and hit enter and you can see that it is connecting to hive meta store um, and getting the metadata of the table and eventually it is actually getting the records of the uh, uh, records that are in the table for example, if you run the select star from departments, here there are 9 records 2 to 8 and then 8000 and 9000. Here also there are 9 records 2 to 8 and 8000 and 9000. Similarly, if you want to do count, you can just say count and it will give the count of those um, uh, data set which is 9 in this case. So using uh, uh, command like this SQL context.sql as long as your hive site.xml is accessible in the spark uh, uh, configuration uh, location you will be able to run queries like this directly against hive tables and you can write quite complex queries whatever they have mentioned here as part of the syllabus like joining the data sets calculating the statistics like average sum etc can be done using Hive very easily. So that's the power of Hive context and I will cover it uh, uh, extensively. Um, and there is another context called SQL context which is Spark context itself without the knowledge of Hive. In that case, you have to define how the table is and all those things. It's a little bit more complicated but not very different from Hive SQL. Uh, I will cover that also very extensively. So this is it about uh, uh, SQL context and if you want to run Spark in Python context you can just say PySpark and hit enter and uh, it will launch Spark in a Python command line interface. You can run all Python commands in this or Python programs in this and it will run in the Spark context in the distributed fashion on your cluster uh, using Spark internally. So PySpark and Spark Shell, these two are the interfaces which you might have to use while running your applications or while developing your applications as part of the certification. And also once you have a, a, a Spark program or a Python program, uh, you, you have to submit as an application and those things will be covered as part of the next video. But for now, uh, this is it. You can either use PySpark 
a Spark shell to get into the command line interface. And you can either use uh, Python if it is PySpark and Scala if it is Spark sh shell to uh, run the commands or execute the scripts uh, to process the data which is covered as part of the certification. That being said, I hope you are enjoying the content on my channel. If you like this video, please click on the like button. If you want to provide feedback, please use the comment section of the video. If you have any technical questions, please use the Stack Overflow by tagging it as Spark uh, or Spark and Scala if it is Scala related and Spark and Python if it is Python related. I will be monitoring those and I will be responding uh, to you uh, to the best of my knowledge. And if you want to be part of the LinkedIn group Hadoop certifications, please send an invitation and we can discuss not only about this certification but all the certifications in future. That being said, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. You will get to see a lot more content like this over time. Thank you. Bye.